Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to remove a rig and just retrieve the, uh, the, pol the polygonal geometry. This is a great thing to do if you want to practice rigging, uh, if you're trying to get a professional reel together, or if you just need to experiment a little bit on your own and don't need to have modeling in the way. Uh, if you do uh, if you do this process though and you use someone else's model recognize that you can't you can't do anything else with it uh, uh, um, without their permission so uh, this their work is technically copyrighted uh, so just this should be a personal exercise not something you're necessarily going to show um, off as your model or use for your own production again without permission if you were just showing off a a rig if you're trying to put together a rigging reel this probably is something you could do um, probably you could get away with as long as you gave them credit uh, which I'm going to do now as well so um, this particular rig comes from the Agora community website which has some really fantastic models uh, most of them are free to use as long as you're giving credit um, and some really great professional quality work here. So um, in this particular case, I chose the Naruto model, which I'm sure I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. I apologize in advance. Um, let's see here. I forgot where I had the first step on. So this is what we're looking at. The, the, main, the main process here is super easy to do. It only takes a couple minutes. I'm going to try to keep to that as well for the video so we're not wasting too much time. We are going to be using a number of commands here. I'm going to put them up on the screen for a second. I'll put them also down in the description in the video. And I'll also put the Agora website down there too, so you can go look for characters on your own. Um, the main ones we're going to be picking is Edit, Delete by Type History, I'll edit, edit, Delete All by Type History, uh, Modify Freeze Transformations. Uh, the parent and unparent commands are just hotkeys. So is the Control plus G for Group. Most of you guys probably know that one already. Um, and then the mesh cleanup will go through. Uh, and then just for additional cleanup, the modify prefix hierarchy, uh, prefix hierarchy names and search and replace names. All really great commands here. And again, I'll put those down in the description for you. Um, so the main idea here is right now, this mesh and the rig are all integrated very tightly. So if you just copy the mesh directly off of here, you're going to get a mesh that's still linked to tons of stuff. And if you're trying to rig, you want things to be as clean as possible right from right out of the gate. So that's what we're trying to get to is kind of that initial position that you would have been in if someone had passed this model off to you. So there are two tricks to this. I'm going to show you the short one first, and I'll show you the long one later. If it's rigged really well, you might find you might be able to open this rig up and find someone there, the modeling group that actually just has the mesh in it. If you can do this, if it's lined up this nicely, so we can go in here and actually see it's, it's, um, it is lined up like this here, you could literally grab this group, make a duplicate of it, and then delete connections, and you'd be good to go. That, so it cuts off a lot of, lot of uh, steps in the very beginning, or one major one, I should say. Uh, the only downside here is there's possibility that somewhere in the rest of the rig, which could be very extensive, that there is... Um, other pieces that are buried in there. A good rig shouldn't have that. All the mesh should be in its own group separately, but not everyone makes a perfect rig. Maybe that's why you're actually trying to re-rig it. So um, if this fit isn't available to you, then the safest method is to do this, which is set it up with the, the major, so that uh, it's, you're seeing the mesh the way that you'd like to see it for animation purposes. Go into your show menu. I'll rip this off so we don't have to keep going back and forth. I'm going to choose none, which should make everything disappear in the scene. And then I'm just going to bring back first. Um, I do bring back NURBS first to see if there's any NURBS mesh in there. That's kind of old school. I don't see that much these days, but occasionally some of the facial geometry is NURBS. We don't have any here. Um, and then I'm going to bring back the polygons. And when I bring back the polygons, it should only reveal the mesh and absolutely nothing else, not a single piece of that rig. So it pretty much puts us back in that initial position. Um, you probably won't be able to select it again if the rig is done correctly You'll need to go over here and to the layers and turn off any layers that say R for reference mode It'll probably be a geo or mesh layer that still that has it on there. That's preventing you from grabbing everything With everything grabbed we can now we're going to duplicate the mesh run a few operations to clean it and separate it from from the rig and then we'll pull it out into its own group. The order here is important, otherwise you're likely to lose some parts as we go through it. So here we go. Um, make sure that as you do this too, that you don't click off of the mesh. 
We want to keep the duplicate mesh that we're about to make selected the whole time. So here we go. The first operation is Shift D, which will duplicate the mesh we currently have. Now we could work with the original mesh, but I find it's a little bit safer and a little bit cleaner to make a duplicate mesh first. So I just press Shift D. I don't see any change, but that is just because um, we have now two meshes on top of each other. Again, keep the duplicated mesh selected. You'll notice if it was previously skinned, it probably is locked down. If it's locked, that's gonna create some problems for us. So I'm gonna select from the Translate X with the left mouse button, drag down to Scale Z, and then right click and choose Unlock Selected. We should see um, that now disappear, the locks on there. Again, we're still working with the du duplicated mesh. This next few operations are really important. Um, we need to, um, we need to zero out all the controls here. It's possible that when we pull out the mesh, if they aren't, weren't zeroed out before, that ultimately as we move them to a new location or a new group, it's going to change their positioning and you're going to lose pieces. So with everything still selected, I'm going to right click in the window here. Uh, the right click just keeps everything selected, but makes the window active. And I'm going to choose uh, Modify and Freeze Transformations. It's giving me a warning that there may be some issues here. We're going to take a risk that we actually got it, since I can't click around to see if they're all zeroed. Um, so we're just going to keep moving. If there is a problem, we'll come back to this space and try it again. So we are now Frozen Transformations. We're also going to be a little safe here and do Edit. Delete by type history. This will hopefully delete any connections to the to the mesh, the the main mesh, and again kind of isolate these these mesh pieces so that when I pull them out and put them in their own group, they don't start doing weird things. So at this point, we've frozen transfer. We've uh, um, unlocked the mesh. We've deleted history and we just are we froze transformations and we just deleted history. At this point, with the mesh all selected, I'm gonna press Shift P and Shift P is gonna pull out all that duplicate mesh I just made into uh, outside of the actual model. And then I'm gonna press Control G to put it in its own new group. The new group I'll label, you can call it Geo, you can call it mesh, you can call it mesh underscore HP for high poly or LP for low poly, whatever you need. At this point, we should have a complete set of duplicated mesh disconnected from the original rig in all ways um, and zeroed out. At this point, I can actually now check it and see that everything's zeroed. And I'm actually seeing that some things aren't. And it did warn me that there might be issues there. So this is the left eye appears to be still connected. So before we go any further, I am gonna go ahead and try to clean that up. Normally at this point, I'd wanna go ahead and delete the main rig, but if I do that now, I might actually start to misplace things because they're probably still connected in some way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab them all again directly now that we can access them. I'm gonna try to freeze transformations one more time. This time it looked like it was a little happier with the operation. I can click on a few things and just double check that they are indeed frozen. And frozen just means again, zero for translates and rotates and scales are at one. This looks much better. And it does look like we retain the entire model. That's making me feel pretty good. At this stage, before I get rid of the original rig, just to make sure again, there's no connections here, I'm gonna go to edit, delete all by type in history. And that will, that will kill history on the entire scene. Normally, if you do this on anything with a rig in it, you would destroy that rig. But now that we've already pulled out this mesh safely, we should be good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and select the original rig just to be sure. Um, this might be a time to save it to make sure in case uh, something goes awry. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drop this in, we'll call it Naruto Base Mesh. Now with it saved, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the original Naruto and see what happens. What you'll sometimes see here is if you, don't, if you hadn't gotten rid of all connections is that some pieces might pop around or move to different places or disappear altogether or you might lose texture maps. In this case though, it looks like we're good. Everything maintained. So we're doing good. Ultimately, um, I wanna get rid of any layers we don't need at this point. So under layers, I'm gonna choose uh, delete unused layers. In this case, that was both of them. If it didn't delete both of them or didn't delete other layers, I like mine clean when I first start rigging. 
You can also select layers individually and choose a delete, uh, delete selected layer, but this actually looked good. This is what I wanted to have happen, so I'm gonna go ahead and save it again. So I don't have to do that again. And then the last step, should you wanna be persnickety, which if you're rigging, you should, you'd wanna go into the geo uh, group that we made and relabel these as you see fit. Um, and also arrange them so they're easy to work with. Like if you have a lot of stuff in the head, it'd be nice to group those together. Um, you can just group by selecting. So I could do this and press Control G and now type in, you know, head group. And then now I'm just arranging stuff inside the head that keeps all this other stuff separate. And again, I like to make my, my stuff nice and clean. Uh, C usually means center on most models and then uh, left and right. This one doesn't use that much. So I definitely would prefer to label these, for example, oh, they put the R first. I usually like to put in the R last because that way if I try to alphabetize these, they line up nicely. So instead of this, it would actually be shoe, I don't need it to be two, uh, underscore R. And I don't need the geo on every single one. I know it's geo because it's gonna be in the geo group. So that's what I would do. And again, like the shoe, this shoe here, I'd say shoe, left. Um, I usually use capitals actually just to be uh, make sure that the L's are clear. Um, and then I'd always put the put them in order. So if I start with right for, for this model, everything else would be right, right thing first, left thing first. So this would be hand R. You can also use some tools like this. Um, if you go into modify, you can use the prefix hierarchy names to add a prefix to everything. Um, I do this sometimes, like if you wanted the geo in front, I could just put geo underscore, and now it puts geo in front of every one of these. That's the prefix. Um, this, that would be extraneous in this case. You can also do a search and replace names. So I could search for say, underscore geo and put in something else there instead. Um, unfortunately, you can't put in nothing. It won't let you do that, which is a real drag be a great way to delete stuff. But here I can replace all the geos with uh, underscore R01. Or maybe you just do underscore 01, oops. And replace that with, it still didn't work. Replace that with left. So you get half of them. And then you have to go just back and replace the ones that are on the right side with dash R. So. Anyway, lots of ways to fix this up, but I definitely like when I'm working with, with a model to have things super clean when I'm all done. When you're all done, um, again, I would save it out maybe as a new version or save it over the old one. You can do one extra step, which is the mesh cleanup, just to make sure there's no additional things there that you don't want. In this case, you just grab all the mesh, go to, um, I'm in rigging, go to the modeling menu and go to mesh, cleanup, option box, always choose the option box if you don't know what the settings are. Um, it should default to something that looks like this. And what you wanna do is go down to the remove geometry section and click on every checkbox with the exception of this one. This one tends to create trouble. Um, although I suppose you could play at the area tolerance. I find it's not usually worth it. Hit apply. That should do a full clean in the mesh and remove any bad stuff in there, which you definitely don't want for rigging. Always check after you've done this operation and make sure it didn't uh, delete something you actually care about or introduce some wackiness, in which case you can slowly start removing these, usually from the invalid components back until it doesn't delete stuff you actually care about. Again, I can save this out. One last thing you might wanna do that might introduce some problems, especially if you're using an older model, um, although we should be back to kind of just basic stuff at this point, um, is go to File and look for the Optimize Scene click on the option box here. You can run in a full optimization if you want just by hitting optimize. But the one we really care about, I find, is this one, the unknown nodes. This can often bring in really weird stuff that you don't want. So you can just optimize it here or you can optimize and pull out all these things. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and optimize the unknown nodes. Always a good idea to save first in case it does something weird and you know explodes your character, something you don't wanna do. You will notice that all this messing around did add in some new uh, history. We don't want that. So your very last thing you should do one more time is again, edit, delete all by type history and clean that up. So we have a nice clean character ready to go. 
So that seems like a lot of steps, but once you get used to it, it's really easy to do. And again, a great way to get a nice clean model ready to go that you can start practicing with. So good luck. Hope this works out for you.